this is not.
pray that you bless this service. I pray that, that you bless all those bringing the word today. Um, Lord, lift up our service and, and speak through them to us, Lord. Um, Lord, uh, I pray for all those who lift up their hands today with their concerns, Lord. You know everyone. You know what they need, Lord. I, I pray that you bring them peace and, and that they can see your moving through through their troubles, Lord. Um, I pray for all our leaders, Lord. I pray for the local, for our local leaders and our world leaders that they seek you in the decisions they make, Lord. Um, protect us as we go throughout this week, Lord. In all these things, I pray in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Good morning, Victory Baptist Church. Why don't you give the Lord some noise? Amen. Until God got home. 
and through Change Lives Ministries. He came into the program, uh, went through the program, and did exceedingly well. And uh, last year became a member of Victory Baptist Church. And slowly but surely, he began to help Robert with these young men. And we actually, a group of us went and ministered to the homeless community behind the uh, North Charleston at Walmart. And Adam got to share his story with all those back there. And he got to say that I was right here at one point. And he just began to share what God has done. And a church, God, he has a calling for all of our lives. And every one of you, you can step into a purpose he's given you. And I'm just, just, these are just two stories. There's many stories here, amen. Many stories of people who just uh, have been saved by Christ and put to use for his kingdom. And they're making a difference. And then you also can help somebody like Hans, amen. Uh, <laughs> Hans was filling a gap that actually God was calling someone else to. And so I, I just want to challenge you, if you've never served in the church, never gotten involved, uh, given back to your community in some way, shape, or form, prayerfully consider it to join with us to make a difference in, to the hearts and lives of our community. Uh, just be encouraged for that. And, and also, just continue to pray that God will send us people uh, that don't know Him. Amen. That we can see them come to know, see them come to know Jesus Christ. Uh, also, I, I want to remind everybody that we had a young man here who's been a member here many years. Uh, he went on to be with the Lord uh, last month. And we are looking to have his memorial service this coming Saturday at 1 p.m. right here. Uh, his name is Ryan Bender. Uh, many of you knew him and, and loved him. We will be celebrating his life this coming Saturday at 1 p.m. And so his family would just really appreciate if you came and uh, worship the Lord Jesus with us that morning and remember his life. Um, but uh, we have a lot to rejoice about. Amen. And um, how many of y'all are excited that the uh, Dublin Valley Trio is with us? Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, every year they come here, Dan and Tracy... It gives him a hard time. That's just the only way I can put that. But y'all give him a hard time too. Amen. And he told me to tell you that the reason why he's not here today is because he heard y'all were coming. And <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, we, uh, we'll, we'll relay those messages. Any messages you have for him, we'll relay it. Okay? But, uh, we're going to go into our time of offertory hymn now. Uh, y'all give Randy a hand.
Andrew, if you walk. Y'all thank you. It's such an honor to be with you here today. And uh, if Nanny's out there listening somewhere, I want Nanny to know that my mom told me when I was young. She said, if you can't think of something good to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. <laughs> I miss him. I love Danny. He's one of his one of my favorites. Miss him so much today. I just love so many of you we've got to know over the years. And we just appreciate you letting a bunch of hippies come over here and sing for you today. I'm going to do one here. This is one of my favorite songs that Carol does. Since I started
As a believer, we're all standing away on the old ship as I listen. So 
you are a beautiful young lady. I said, you can have anything on this table for that $5. The money don't matter. And she had a CD in her hand and looked at it. She finally put it back up in the rack. And she said, that's all right, said that. I don't want to waste my money. <laughs> and I tell you what, it took us at least 30 minutes to get him off his knees from under that table crying like a <laughs> Please don't come back and tell me that today. <laughs> I want to do one. I was telling one of the brothers here. I, uh, COVID has kind of come back on us a little. And it's this, uh, we certainly hope the strain doesn't get wor worse than it is. It don't seem to be as bad as it was the first time through. Boy, I tell you, it's, uh, I had it really bad. I, I shared it with you last year and I, and I was telling you, this gentleman here, we, my wife had it, she had a headache for a day, and I got it, it liked to wipe me out. And uh, she uh, asked her, I said, why would that be? She said, only thing I can tell you, you're weak. You're just weak. <laughs> but uh, I was on the ventilator for three weeks. I was out no part of anything for a month. Couldn't walk when I got up, and they put me in the coma twice. And I told my wife I wasn't going to make it. And a lot of people praying for me, I did. But when I woke up, I was saved when I was seven years old. I have never felt the arms of Jesus Christ around me any more than I felt that, that morning when I woke up. Even in your bad times, no matter what you go through, he said he would never leave us or forsake us. And I believe that today. If you got any loved ones going through a, something like that, I can promise you, he will not leave you alone. But through that time, that was one of the most sweetest times that I had with the Lord. And it was peaceful.
Thank you. After this for our last song, I want to do this one. Rodney Griffin wrote and says, when he was on the cross, the nails did him all day, but he helped the nails. Listen. The people gathered on the scene to watch the
be assured that they will not go unpunished. By loyalty and faithfulness, iniquity is atoned for, and by the fear of the Lord, one avoids evil. When the ways of the people please the Lord, he causes even their enemies to be at peace with them. Better is a little with righteousness than large income with injustice. The human mind plans the way, but who? The Lord directs the steps. I, I love just those few verses. It, it, recall, it helps me remember that even in my day of trouble, God has a plan for it. And even in the hard moments, I was uh, just with a family yesterday, the, the uh, patriarch of the family uh, got COVID almost a year and a half ago and has been in and out of the hospital for about that long. I've been on the ventilator, I've been on the tray, and uh, it's finally getting his oxygen level. He got an infection last week, and it's about uh, what sent him back to the hospital uh, last night. And as I was with that family, as this man's been through so much, listen to this fellow. And worked hard all of his life. He had the hands of a working man with broad shoulders and through sickness that had uh, made him uh, smaller than what he was. But in his gaunt face, he looked at me and was like, Sir, what do you want me to tell all those who are praying for you? And he smiled and said, Tell them I love them and that the Lord loves them. And he said, I have never been so close to God. And I can verify that. And when you go through hard moments, there's no question that the God who shaped it all is with you. And it's actually during those hard moments in which you feel like you're being defeated, in which God is actually going to bring a victory out of it. I'm sure the cross looked like a big defeat to a lot of the Lord's disciples. And it looked like a victory to all of the Lord's enemies. But they had no idea what that defeat would lead to. Because it was actually a victory. And there's things in our lives that we might be facing that it's just time to lay down and let go. How many of you have been just fighting a war that you know you can't win? I want to let you know that's every battle that you wage. And if it's not God's will, that's a losing battle. But I have very good news for you. You just need to switch teams. Amen. If you just have been fighting a battle you can't win, it, you might have to ask yourself, Lord, am I actually walking the direction you've called me to walk? Or am I walking against your will? Because nothing ever good is ever going to come out of that. And uh, a lot of us are in rebellion, and a lot of us are just plain comfortable. Amen? How many of you are so comfortable that uh, you, you, you actually end up going backwards in your faith? I think many of us have created a culture of comfort in these last two years. Because when the government tells you to stay at home, how many of you were just like, praise the Lord? <laughs> All right, I mean, how many of you were just like, you have to stay home? We're like, oh, really? I do? Thank you so much. Because many of us didn't want to leave. But if you're not careful, your home can become a tomb. I'm reminded of Jesus. He had very good friends, Martha and Mary. And he received word from them that their brother, the one whom he loved, his friend, was very sick. And Jesus said, well, I'm not going yet. And the disciples were very wondered about that. But when the Lord decided that it was time to go, he went. And one of the first people who came to meet him was Martha. And she came to him with almost seemingly an accusation. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then Jesus said, your brother will live. And she says, well, I know that he'll be raised in the last day during the resurrection. I know that, Jesus. You see, she knew the teachings. She knew his word. But Jesus said, no, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he died, he will live. You see, she knew the teaching, she knew the word, but Jesus said, no, it's not a teaching or a word, it's a person. It's a relationship, and I am it. I am the resurrection. You know, you can know the Bible and not have it in your heart. You can know the principles, but it not give you a better personhood. So in this moment, I don't know if you're having a good season or a bad season wins or fails. But I do know that God is with you always. 
And it's during those hard seasons that you can really feel his presence. I want to share one more story. We'll go into a time of invitation. Something that has always set upon my heart was when 13 missionaries were kidnapped uh, by the Taliban many years ago. And there was a, quite a stir of uh, politics because the missionaries were not from America, but Americans wanted to get involved, and, and there's other countries involved. And so while we, they were all talking about how we're going to get them back, and the Taliban talking about how, they're, how much money they wanted, the missionaries, you know what they were doing? They were praying, worshiping. Their lead pastor, who was their elder, he said, I just spoke to the rest of the men when they come and say that we're going to execute one of you because of delays. I just want to let you know that that's going to be me. And another, one of the older men said, no, that's not going to be you. I'm a minister too. And I'm going to, I, it's going to be me. And he says, well, hold on, buddy. You're not ordained. They were arguing over what? Who was going to die first? I want to tell you, it was the elder, the preacher. He was the one who died. And he was the only one who died. Because God got the rest of them. Amen. But years later, a journalist was meeting with a few of those who were in that moment. And as they were talking about what happened and their experiences, about how they hid pages of the Bible just so that they could read God's Word during that time. One of the captives looked at one who is now a pastor now, who is now ordained. And he said, Brother, don't you wish we could go back there again? Because I never felt so close to God. I know you might not like the season you're in, but you may be missing an opportunity to drink living water, real life, and watch the one who sustains it all sustain you. Would you please stand as we go to the Lord in prayer? My brothers and sisters, they're going to lead us in a time of invitation. It is my prayer as we go into this invitation that we would bring our joys and burdens that we would come for prayer. And if there is anyone here today that they would give their lives to the one who gave them their life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time, this moment we can worship you. And Father, I thank you for these missionaries that are before us today. God, I ask that you will continue to give them favor, anointing, healing, and Lord, that they would continue to preach the gospel through song. And Father, for all those who might be having a hard moment, Father, Lord, let them know that they may be in the best place possible. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. When you're dead. He'll be that 
are students mm -hmm. and teachers. How many of y'all go back to school this week? I see you're excited. Amen. <laughs> Just have the strength to raise their hands. Uh, but uh, it, is, it is a good thing, though. If things don't change, that means they're dead. Amen. Uh, so change is good. Y'all be in prayer for them as they enter into a new season. I'll be in prayer for this group as they, as they depart from us this morning. But I pray we will see you guys again very soon. We will be collecting a love offering for them. And so if you'd like to, on the way out, we're going to have some people uh, stationed. Uh, by our doors, if you'd like to give towards the ministries, they are a nonprofit, and so they, they're continuing uh, seeking the Lord's will. And, uh, and please come back tonight at what time? 6 p.m. And what are we going to do? I heard it eat the you know? we're, we're going to worship, uh, we're going to hear testimonies, and, and then we're going to eat. Amen. Uh, so, love you so much. Would you? Uh, pray with me one more time. Lord Jesus, as we come to a time of, of, of ending, of closing this one moment, Father, we just ask as we go into this next uh, part of the day, Lord, that we would not leave you here. Lord, that we would take you with us. And God, that we would be light and salt for you. God, I thank you for what you've done this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name. All God's people say, Amen. Amen.